All right, welcome to this evening's meeting. We are going to have our invocation this evening by Reverend Daniel Perry, youth pastor of Fountain of Faith Missionary Baptist Church in Riverdale, be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this breath of life on this day. And Father God, as we come together, we ask that you come in and, and teach the teachers how to lead. Teach them, dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, make the right decisions for the people. And that we might be able to be a strong community, a strong country. In Jesus' name, every heart say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the May 16, 2017 regular business meeting. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Does any member want to offer any amendments? Yes, I believe, uh, what resolution was that for the parks? Mr. Chairman, uh, it is item 16 um, on the agenda on page 7. The license agreement for the Funk Fest. Yes, sir, and the request from the department is that that be removed. So I'll place that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, before you, uh, would you, if you can do them all at once, what I would ask you, the, the zoning rewrite uh, was advertised to be considered by the board tonight. Uh, and what I, that's not on the agenda because of the length of time that it was going to require. The board has called special meetings for the 23rd and the 30th to review and then to approve that is my understanding. Those have been advertised uh, for those dates. However, since it was also advertised originally for the 16th, I'd ask that you amend the agenda to place that item, consideration of that item on the agenda, and then when you come to it, we'll vote to continue that until the 23rd and the 30th. If you procedurally, that will protect us. Okay, so we need to put it on the agenda. Agenda for tonight, yes, sir. So let's take a vote on that. Is there a second? So moved. Second. Probably moving to second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. On um, reference to the Recension of the license uh, agreement for the Funk Fest to remove that item. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Any others? Hearing none. May we have a motion to adopt the agenda with the approved amendments? Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Probably moving second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Approval of the May 2nd, 2017 regular business meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next four items are a proclamation for the board to present this evening. The first proclamation, Clayton County recognizes the Clayton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market as presented by Chairman Turner. Will the recipients of this proclamation please come forward as the commissioners and that, join you for the- And as they are coming forth, I just wanna make a statement. Uh, I just wanna make it clear for the record that when the Board of Commissioners approved the resolution 2017-32 regarding the 15th MARTA amendment at the May 2nd, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting, the version of the agreement that was approved was the version revised on May 1st of 2017, which included some minor edits in the addition of an Exhibit B. The clerk should note for the record and make sure to include the correct version of the 15th MARTA Amendment with that resolution. Are you clear on that, Ms. Davis? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Let's do it. <laughs>
and the proclamation reads, Clayton County recognizes Clayton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market, whereas the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension, in collaboration with Clayton County Government, the Clayton County Community Development Department, the HUD Programs Division, and the City of Lovejoy Farm Fresh officially launched the Clayton County Fresh Mobile Market the beginning of May 2017. And whereas, since January 2016, the Clayton Extension Office has been working in partnership with Lovejoy Farm Fresh to provide fresh produce, free of charge, to the SNAP-Ed, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program Education, participants, in conjunction with other nutrition education programs. And whereas, the goal of the Clayton Fresh Market is to expand healthy food access to the community in an equitable and holistic way. Clayton Fresh Market will bring locally grown fresh fruits, vegetables, and health education directly to communities that would otherwise lack access to these healthy foods and resources. And whereas, this program was created as a way to transform Clayton and change the negative health outcomes for our constituents. Affordability and access are often challenges to proper nutrition, and the mobile market concept addresses both of these issues. The nutrition education, coupled with food demonstration, will help constituents develop new and innovative ways of preparing food for their families. And whereas, food is our sustaining force that connects us all. When people eat healthy food, they live longer, have increased quality of life, and reduce their chances for obesity-related diseases. Clayton Fresh exists to reduce the access burdens of eating healthier and fostering a better cultural identity in Clayton County. Now, therefore, I, Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim to support the Clayton Fresh Mobile Market in Clayton County, Georgia. I encourage all citizens to eat healthier and support the launch of the Clayton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and calls the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed the 16th day of May in the year 2017. Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman. In the next proclamation, Clayton County observes May 2017 as National Drug Court Month, as presented by Chairman Turner. Is it staff? And the proclamation reads, Clayton County observes May 2017 as National Drug Court Month, whereas research has shown that drug courts are effective and significantly improve substance abuse treatment outcomes, reduce drug abuse and crime at a lower cost than any other strategy. And whereas, each year drug courts keep seriously drug addicted offenders out of jail and in treatment while under close supervision of an interdisciplinary team led by judges, prosecutors, defense counsel, treatment, probation officers, law enforcement, case managers, and coordinators. 
and whereas, drug courts are key to breaking the cycle of drug use, crime, arrest, and incarceration by diverting nonviolent offenders into treatment instead of prison. And whereas, the DUI drug court was implemented in 2007, and the adult felony drug court was implemented in 2009 to address the issue of recidivism and the high cost of incarceration for drug and alcohol addiction in Clayton County. And whereas, according to the National Drug Court Institute, for every $1 spent on drug court, $2.14 is saved in criminal justice courts. And whereas, the Clayton County DUI Drug Court has admitted 696 participants and graduated 273 participants since 2007. The Adult Felony Drug Court has admitted 177 participants and graduated 49 participants since 2009. And whereas, judges, prosecutors, defense attorneys, substance abuse and rehabilitation professionals, law enforcement and community supervision personnel, researchers and educators, and other dedicated to drug courts are improving lives and restoring communities throughout Clayton County. And whereas, Clayton County residents are encouraged to recognize the practitioners and participants who make drug courts work and the significant contributions that drug courts have made and continue to make in reducing drug usage and crime. Now, therefore, I, Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2017 as National Drug Court Month in Clayton County, Georgia. I urge all citizens to recognize the significant contributions drug courts have made over the years towards reducing substance abuse, crime, and recidivism. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed this 16th day of May in the year 2017. Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman. In the next proclamation, Clayton County recognizes the Lake Spivey, Jack and Jill of America as presented by Commissioner Warner. The members of Lake Spivey, Jack and Jill of America, please come forward. And the proclamation reads, Clayton County recognizes Lake Spivey, Georgia chapter, Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, whereas Jack and Jill of America Incorporated National Organization was founded by Marion Stubbs Thomas on January 24, 1938 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The objectives of this nonprofit organization are to create a medium of contact for children which will stimulate growth and development to provide children with constructive educational, cultural, civic, recreational, and social programs by aiding mothers in learning more about their children through careful studies, and to seek for all children the same advantages which we desire for our own. And whereas, Lake Spivey, Georgia, Jack and Jill of America Incorporated was initiated in 2003, wherein Adrian Booth Johnson wrote a letter seeking information on forming a Jack and Jill of America chapter in Jonesboro, Georgia. The chapter was officially formed on October 2, 2004. Adrian Johnson served as the Lake Spivey, Georgia chapter's first president. The chapter has grown tremendously, where Deidre Collins currently serves as the chapter's seventh president. 
and whereas, Lakes Bobby Jack and Jill Chapter Community Service Projects include the following, the Real Initiative, the Future Business Leaders of America Conference, Regional Associates Day of Service, House of Dawn Program, which provides transitional homes for teen mothers, Mundy's Mill High School at Risk Teen Support, Sponsoring Seniors Graduation Expenses, Mothers Away from Home, which assist out-of-state chapter students attending Morehouse and Spelman Colleges, and whereas, Lake Spivey Jack and Jill Chapter is an avid supporter of the Will You Bra program. In recent years, gender equality and education in developing countries has made tremendous advances. In Ghana, West Africa, young girls and women between the ages of 10 and 19 represent 11% of the total population, 2.7 million people. This program is designed to provide free feminine hygiene kits, training on feminine hygiene procedures, and puberty education. The training is for girls in schools, churches, social organizations, and rural villages. This is a low-cost, effective program to help reduce girls' absenteeism and dropout rates. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, I, Felicia Franklin Warner, Commissioner, do hereby call on all citizens to join me in recognizing Lake Spivey, Georgia Chapter, Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, for their leadership and community activism. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed the 16th day of May in the year 2017. Felicia Franklin Warner, Commissioner. And the final proclamation for this evening, Clayton County congratulates the GRPA state track winners as presented by Commissioner Hambrick. And the proclamation reads, Clayton County recognizes Crystal Daly and Eli Williams, GRPA 2017 Track and Field State Champions. 
Whereas, the Georgia Recreation and Park Association, GRPA, supports and promotes the recreation and park industries within the state of Georgia. And whereas, the mission of GRPA is to promote healthy lifestyles through the utilization of park facilities and recreation services. And whereas, the state is divided into seven geographic districts within GRPA, and Clayton County is identified as the fourth district. And whereas, Clayton County participated in the 2017 State Athletic Championship, State Track and Field Meet Class A, May 5th through the 6th in Augusta, Georgia. And whereas, Crystal Daly, a fourth grade student at Rivers Edge Elementary, took home the first place championship title for the U10 Long Jump. She was also the third place winner in the long jump at the 2016 regionals, which qualified her for the Junior Olympics. And whereas, Eli Williams, a third grade student at Browns Mill Elementary, took home the first place championship title for the U10 long jump, 50 meter, and 100 meter. Now, therefore, I, Gail B. Hambrick, Commissioner, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby congratulate Crystal Daly and Eli Williams as GRPA 2017 Track and Field Champions for the 4th District. I encourage all citizens to join me in wishing these remarkable athletes great success in track and field as they continue to excel as student athletes. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia to be affixed this 16th day of May in the year 2017. Gail B. Hambrick, Commissioner. The board will now consider a request of Assistant Director of Central Services, Jalees Williams. And as you come, if you will take them all together, unless a board member wants to take one separately. But I want to take this opportunity to echo some of the sentiments and comments by some of the citizens in reference to Chief Register. He's been an excellent chief. He's mm -hmm. been innovative. He's answered that call and he's for the best part uh, have always been accessible. So I'd like to take this opportunity and applaud you for the work that you've done. You will be there. I want you to say something, Chief. I don't know if you intended to or not, but... Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, uh, I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to come up. Uh, first off, to the citizens of Clayton County, it has truly been a privilege to be your Chief of Police. Uh, Clayton County is a great county. Uh, Cobb County uh, has nothing on Clayton County. Resources don't make a great county, the spirit does. Mm. And uh, I think there's a lot of things from a spirit standpoint that we can teach Cobb County and any other county in the state of Georgia. Uh, my decision to go is predicated on I'm getting up in age. <laughs> and it, uh, it seems that a retirement uh, is a, a, a better situation there, retirement uh, in the next four years than, than uh, uh, and, and, and that's really the driving force. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm honored to be the chief of police there when that happens. But uh, I'm also honored to have been a part of this team. Uh, each commissioner, I have to tell you that I appreciate the support that each of you gave me. Uh, no matter what you may think, I can look at each commissioner here and I can truthfully tell you as the chief of police that on a daily basis I have worked with each of these men and women and they have gave me 110 percent support and uh, they are all the things that I was able to accomplish at the police department 
uh, certainly the men and women in my command staff uh, have a great deal to do with that, but also these uh, elected officials up here. They work very hard for you, and it's been an honor to serve under each and every one of you, and I thank you for that, Mr. Chairman and all commissioners here. Uh, and the COO, uh, Dietrich Stanford, uh, it's been an honor to work for you. You're a great man, and uh, I'm going to miss that relationship that you and I have, and I'm going to miss uh, bouncing ideas off of you, uh, so keep your phone close. <laughs> So again, it's been an honor. Uh, I lead Clayton County will certainly be embedded in my heart forever. Uh, chiefs come, chiefs go. Men leave buildings, but uh, what they leave behind remains forever. And I hope that uh, certainly I will take the friendships that I have been able to make here with uh, my coworkers and uh, the uh, citizens of Clayton County. I praise God that uh, I'm I'm a lucky man to have some of the friendships that I made down here, and I know those are friendships that will last forever. Um, and I treasure each and every one of you. So as I leave, I take you in my heart with me, and I hope that in some small way, I leave a piece of me with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you do have two more weeks left, so uh, we still got you around. Can we say something, Chairman? Yes. I know that I haven't been here long, Chief, but I want to say this. I actually met Chief two, when you, two years ago. When You know how I met him? I'm a vocalist. He reached out to me after singing, and he said, I want to do something for the homeless people. I want to do a project for the homeless because it could easily be one of us. And that, from that day, I knew you were going to be an amazing chief of police for this county. Not just because you served our country and because you're a man of valor, and not just because of your training and your level of intelligence, but because of your compassion. That's what means the most to us as a community. Clayton County is blessed to have had you. Thank you. Yes, please. Good evening. I have 12 requests for the board to consider. The first one is a recommendation for award RFB number 16-97. Fitness. Speak into the mic, please, ma'am. It's my first. The first That's time. okay. That's all right. <laughs> Need you to use that outside voice a little bit. <laughs> recommendation for award RFB number 16-97. Fit fitness equipment for the Clayton County Police Department. The recommendation for award is to the overall lowest responsive and responsible bidder meeting the specifications prox per maxima located in Houston, Texas <coughs> in the amount of $71,398.49. Funding is available <coughs> through the 20, 2016 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Account. The second one. Recommendation for award, RFB number 17-01, cost to cure construction for parcel 99 on GDLT project, STP 00-001-00, parentheses 817 in Clayton slash Fulton counties. The opening bid is February 9th, the opening bid was February 9th, 2017. The recommendation is for award, is to award the lowest responsive and responsible bidder meeting the specifications, Civil Works Incorporated, located in Atlanta, Georgia, in the amount of $290,280. Funding is available through the 2014 SPLOS funds. Recommendation for the purchase of service and for the design and implementation of the new county website, utilizing the General Service and Mission GSA, uh, GS-07F445AA, number 17-74. The recommendation is to utilize the GSA scheduled contract for the purchase of services for the design and implementation of the new county website design for Vision Technology Solutions, LLC, located in El Segundo, California, in the amount of $56,829.
funding is available through the information technology fiscal year 2017 of the contract service budget. Recommendation for the purchase of 270 Scott AV3000 HT face pieces, utilize, util, uh, sorry, utilizing the Georgia statewide contract SWC 99999-SPD, SPD 000088-008, SWC number 1799. The recommendation is to utilize the statewide contract for the purchase of 270 Scott AV3000. And this company is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and the total of $72,233.10. Funding is available through the Fire Department Firefighting Supplies Fund. Request for sole source award for SS number 17-100 for the purchase of the Life Pack 15 upgrades. This request is for the purchase of the Life Pack 15 upgrades as a sole source from the Physio Control <coughs> Inc Incorporated located in Redmond, Washington in a total of $27,749.34. Funding is available through the Fire Department Capital Outlay, Other Machinery and Equipment <coughs> Fund. The recommendation for extension of annual contract 2014 year electronic monitoring services and equipment for the Clayton County Juvenile Court. The recommendation is to extend the contract with the U.S. Communities Cooperative Purchasing Agreement for Offender Monitoring Solutions with BI Incorporated, located in Boulder, Colorado, until the renewal of the master agreement expires on January 31st, 2019. The Board of Commissioners <coughs> approved the award on July 15, 2014. The department recommended, no, that's it, sorry, next one. Recommendation for renewal of the county's workers' compensation and employers' liability insurance coverage. This recommendation is to renew the county's access workers' compens compensation and employers liability insurance through Edgewood Partners Insurance Center, EPIC, insurance brokers and consultants for the period of July 1st, 2017 through July 1, 2018, utilizing Midwest Employers Casualty Company with a premium of $176,676. <coughs> the workers' compensation insurance provides the county with insurance coverage in the event of workers' compensation claim to extend $600,000 for the fire and law enforcement employees and $500,000 for all other employees. Funding is available through the county's workers' compensation fund. The next one is the recommendation of award for RFQ number 1796, fireworks for the 2017 Clayton County, Georgia International Park Beach opening. The recommendation is to award the overall lowest responsive and responsible bidder meeting the specifications. Atlanta Pyrotechnics International Incorporated located in Marietta, Georgia in the amount of $7,500. The event is Saturday, May 27, 2017. Funding is available through the Parks and Recreation's Other Contract Service Fees Fund. Recommendation for the purchase of 63 Scott in site Scott site in mass thermal imaging systems with four strap face pieces with utilizing the Georgia statewide contract SWC number 9999-SPD SPD 000088-008 um, that's number 1798 the recommendation is to utilize the statewide contract for the purposes of 63 Scott Light Thermal Imaging Systems with four strap face pieces from Fisher Scientific Company, LLC, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the total amount of $95,681.25. Funding is available through the Fire Department Other Minor Equipment Fund. Request for the first contract amendment, RFP number 1561, 
Comprehensive Justice Management and Information Systems for Clayton County, Georgia Records Management System. The request is to one, accept the assignment of the current contract for the awarded vendor, Sungar Public Sector, to Superion LLC in Lake Mary, Florida. And two, to amend and accept the current contract with Superion LLC located in Lake Mary, Florida. The Board of Commissioners approved this December 6, 2016. Next one. Request for fifth contract amendment 2012 software update. The request is for one to accept the assignment of the current contract from the awarded vendor, Sungard Public Sector, to Superion LLC in Lake Mary, Florida, and two, to amend and accept the current contract with Superion LLC located in Lake Mary, Florida. The, the contract has been previously amended to extend the term, purchase products, and to provide various warranties and maintenance of the services. Sure. And the last one, request for a sole source award, SS number 2017-73 for the purchase of an investigative and analysis software for the police department. The request is the approval of a sole source award to Media Sonar located in Ontario, Canada for the purchase of the investigative analyst software in the amount of $30,000. Funding is available through the Information Technology Fiscal Year 2017 of the Contract Services Budget. This request is for you to approve the request, authorize the chairman or his designee to execute all nece necessary documents to accomplish the intent of the contract and authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget accordingly. Okay, Commissioner Warner has asked to take item number seven separately, so. Is that the only one? Yes, sir. Okay. That's for the vote. So in reference to the remaining items, is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Any questions on any of the items? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous. Reference to item number seven, is there a motion? Is there a motion? Just for the sake of having discussion, I'll make the motion on. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Are there any questions or statements? I just have concern of that uh, with that company. Period. So, I just wanted to vote separately. Okay. Any other statements or questions? All right. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. It's four to one. It passes. Tell Carol, don't be out next time. She give you a hundred to read, exactly. right? Exactly. She, oh, she got you on this one. Nervous, so I'm sorry. You did good. You did a good job. Appreciate you. The board will consider request of Chief Financial Officer Ramona Bivens. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, and Commissioners. I have two items for your consideration this evening. Take them both. Thank you. Budget Amendment 2 23 is for transportation and development to amend the budget to recognize additional revenue in the amount of $8,000 to cover the cost of resurfacing the animal control parking lot. Budget Amendment 2 24 is for the Office of Youth Services. This is to amend the budget to transfer funds for the salary of the Office of Youth Services Administrator position approved by the Board of Commissioners. This amendment will provide funding for the remainder of the FY 2017 fiscal year. The amount is $12,950. All right, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on either item? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. The board will now consider request of Human Resources Director Pamela Ambles. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chair Edmondson, and Commissioners. Human Resources, we have three requests for please your take, consideration. Please take them together unless someone wants to take one separate. Hearing none. Okay. Proceed on. Uh, the first one, we're making a, a request on behalf of Magistrate Court. We are requesting to delete one Judiciary Secretary, Grade 17, Step 1, 
$34,141. We're also requesting to add one judiciary assistant to the chief magistrate judge at grade 22, step one, $43,770. The proposed classification will provide high level administrative support to the chief magistrate judge. This particular classification will also be on call during evenings and weekends to assist the magistrate judges with warrants applications. Uh, the proposed job description has been provided to you all for your review. There is no budgetary impact regarding this request. The funding source have been verified through finance. The second request on behalf of the police department, we have a two component request. First, we're requesting to change the classification title of police officer two to police officer and the title of police officer three to master police officer. The hierarchy, just for the board's uh, information, the hierarchy of police officer will be police recruit, police officer, and master police officer. The second part of the request is to change the compensation strategy for progression to police officer two to police officer three. Currently, police officers two, once they have been with the county for five years in that particular role, they are automatically progressed to the role of police officer uh, three. What we're seeking to do is to add a promotional level to this, to this particular position versus them progressing solely on tenure alone. HR, we fully support this request. We believe that it will spur professional growth, increase morale, as well as ultimately result in the, a higher quality of officers. There is no uh, budgetary implications for this request. The last request on behalf of Human Resources, we're requesting to renew our stop loss co uh, coverage with the incumbent carrier, Aetna. And before I go on, I want to recognize that Human Resources Manager Nella Cooper is here, as well as Ms. Chloe and Ms. Alyssa from EPIC. Stop loss coverage is very important, especially for employers who are self-insured like we are. Stop loss protects us from those catastrophic claim costs. We have specific stop loss with a deductible of $175,000 per covered individual. <coughs> Once uh, claim costs reach that particular threshold, stop loss kicks in and cover the cost of the claim throughout the contract period. The renewal premium for this particular um, coverage is $640,000, uh, was $640,213. It does re uh, represents a 21% increase, and it does include a terminal liability option. Currently, we don't have the terminal liability option. I want to point out the fact that our current premium is $531,104. However, during the planned year, we received over $589,000 in stop loss benefits, and in 2015, we received over a million dollars in stop loss benefits. There is no additional cost to the county because the premium has been included in our medical fund account for FY18. And that's it. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Any questions on any of the items? I have a question. Commissioner uh, Warren. Ms. Ambles, on the stop loss and um, premium, were you presented with other options, with other carriers? Have you been presented that information by our, by our brokers? We uploaded supporting documentation for the board's review, mm -hmm. and in that documentation, it does highlight that the, uh, that the proposal was taken to the market, and Aetna came in by far uh, the cheapest for us. Good. We need to make sure that that's heard, because the reason I voted on the other one is because I do have concerns about the ethics of this company. However, I know the importance of this particular um, item moving forward. So uh, I do want to make sure that that was, I did want to make sure that was stated for the record. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Commissioner Warner. It's it okay. was. It was. We are definitely engaging in due diligence when it comes to contract management at this point. So yes, ma'am, that was, that we, we discussed that with the, uh, with the broker. 
Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Interim Chief Staff Attorney Jack Hancock. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I have one ordinance, two resolutions, and four department requests for your consideration. Take them together, please. All right, sir. Ordinance number 217-36 is an ordinance to amend the Code of Clayton County, Georgia, is amended specifically to delete Part 1, Chapter 38, Environment, Article 6, Floodplain Management, to add Part 1, Chapter 46, Floods, Article 3, Floodplain Management and Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance, to delete Part 1, Chapter 46, Floods, Article 2, Flood Damage Prevention, Division 2, Administration, Section 46-51, Designation of administ Administrator, the next sentence is new from the, the ordinance that was originally distributed, and that is to replace Part 1, Chapter 46, Floods, Article 2, Flood Damage Prevention, Division 1, generally uh, Section 4630 definitions. That previously said uh, to delete instead of replace. Um, to repeal conflicting laws, ordinances, and resolutions to provide for severability, to provide for an effective date of this ordinance and for other purposes. Resolution number 2017-37 is a resolution to authorize commitment of funding for the Forest Parkways Pavement Rehabilitation Project to authorize the chairman to execute all documents and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution to authorize chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. And resolution 2017-37 is a resolution to authorize commitment of funding for the Connolly Road at I-285 interchange study project to authorize the chairman to execute all documents and otherwise to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. Item number 17 on your agenda is a request by the Department of Community Development and the Zoning Administrator that the Board of Commissioners approve the ARC Freight Mobility Plan, which assists local jurisdictions with identifying first mile, last mile projects that promote freight movement. The freight cluster plan will focus on transportation planning, existing and future freight needs, traffic engineering, safety intersection design, and cost estimation. The plan will focus on transportation planning, existing and future freight needs, traffic engineering, safety intersection design, and cost estimation. The $250,000 federal grant requires a 20% match, or $62,000, of which Clayton County is being asked to commit $2,500 further to authorize the chairman to execute the funding commitment letter and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this request, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, all as may be required under the terms of the commitment letter. Item 18 is a request from the court administrator that the Clayton County Board of Commissioners accept a supplemental subgrant award from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council in the amount of $4,170 on behalf of the Clayton County Accountability Courts and to authorize the chairman of the Board of Commissioners to sign all grant-related signature documents. The award grant period runs from April 15, 2017 through June 30, 2017, and the funds will be used to purchase technology equipment laptop monitor, printer, scanner, and iPad for use with the adult felony drug court and the DUI drug court. Further, authorize the chairman to execute the agreement and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the agreement to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense as may be required under the terms of the agreement. Item 19 is a request from Central Services and the SPLOST manager uh, that the Board of Commissioners approve the PATH Foundation Services Agreement for Phase 3 of the trail connecting Crane Road to Waverly Drive, th further to authorize the Chairman to execute the agreement and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this agreement, to authorize the Chief Financial Officer to amend, amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, all as may be required under the terms of the agreement. And item 20 is a request from the Transportation and Development Department that the Board of Commissioners accept the Multimodal Safety and Access Grant from Georgia DOT for sidewalk on State Route 3, Terra Boulevard. The project will add six feet wide sidewalks on the west side of, the Terra, Boule of Terra Boulevard in the unincorporated areas between Flint River Road and State Route 138 
Current project estimate is $274,600. Georgia Department of Transportation will provide up to 70% of the total project cost or approximately $192,220 with the county funding the remaining service, the remaining 30% of approximately $82,300. Funding for the county portion of the project is available through the 2015 SPLOS program. Further, to authorize the chairman to execute the agreement and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the agreement to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense as may be required under the terms of the agreement. It's all, sir. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Are there any? questions on any of the items hearing none those in favor aye. aye opposed it's unanimous two other things mr chairman i'd ask you that pursuant to the notice that was published in connection with the zoning rewrite uh calling for a public hearing to be conducted tonight i'd ask that you call to order a public hearing and then accept a uh, a motion to recess that hearing until the newly designated date of March 30th at 7 p.m. I'd like to also announce for the public that is present that the board will conduct a, a work session on the zoning rewrite ordinance on March 23rd uh, at 6 p.m. in the chambers. So, May, I'm sorry, excuse me, May, I apologize. Pardon me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. May 23rd and May 30th, I apologize. So you need a motion on that? Yes, sir. I, I need for you to call a public hearing to order and then a motion. Okay, so officially call a public hearing to, to order. Is that a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to have a motion to recess until the 23rd and 30th of May. Second. Any questions, statements, comments? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, sir. And we need an executive session on litigation and uh, personnel matters, please, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, the next eight items on the agenda are board appointments. The first appointment is to the Code Enforcement Board to fill <coughs> the unexpired term of Betty Cleave, who has resigned. Okay. The term expires on July 16, 2019. This is a full board appointment. Are there any nominations? Yes, I'd like to nominate Lorraine Oliver. Oh. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Probably move to second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next six appointments are to the Development Authority and the Urban Redevelopment Agency of Clayton County. Um, these are expired terms that ended um, that are will expire March 1st 2021 the first is for Eldrin Bell are Mr. there any nominations yes I would like to nominate Miss Linda Browning is there a second I'll second that um, any questions here and now those in favor aye aye opposed nay okay it fails Mr. Chairman I'd like to hold that appointment for Mr. Bell. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Proper move in a second. Those in favor, aye. <clears throat> aye. aye. Opposed? Nay. Three, two, if it passes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hold the appointment for Mr. Larry Vincent. Is there a second on that? Second. Is there a discussion, sir? Yes. Uh, can I ask why are we continuing to hold these positions when the most important thing to our community is economic development? I'll give you an easy answer. Uh, there are six appointments on a seven member board and to change all of them abruptly would lend to an incontinuity of institutional knowledge and stability on that board. So I propose that we hold Mr. Bell, we hold Mr. Vincent, the chairman, and we hold Ms. West, all who have experience on that board, um, as we move forward with whatever the future holds. Well, to your point about stability, point Mr. Of. Larry Vincent is the chairperson, and I was looking to hopefully reappoint him. So uh, why, outside of his appointment, would you be opposed to holding it? I do want to hold it. But if I it's for stability, I'm sorry, if it's for stability, then the best thing to do is to make sure that they are in the position to operate in the position and not in limbo. Serving. They're He's still, still serving. serving. He's still serving. 
but they're serving in limbo. They don't know what the board's decision is. We need to make a definitive decision. It's to fill an expired term, to continue to fill expired term. I talked to him about it. Right, but my point, my question was, you're talking about stability. So even if you hold it, I think the appointments are what, four or five years? Uh, So by reappointing somebody who's already knowledgeable and serving as the chairperson now, why would we not want that for continuity's sake, that same person to serve on the board? And if it's a bylaw situation, then they need to go back and amend the bylaws so that the the terms are stagnant as opposed to holding it. That would be the proper way to do it. Talk to them about that. We set policy and procedure. We need to make sure that we do that. Okay. Okay, so... Any other questions or comments? All right, those in favor, aye. This so is a motion to hold. No. Oh. Is that right? Yes, that was your motion. Was okay. The motion is All not right. to make a decision. His motion was to hold it, to and hold. it was, it was uh, second. Right. So unless there's a, any other discussion. All right. In favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it passes. Next. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hold the appointment for Ms. Tamika West. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? I have a question. If we can make a motion to hold the appointment, can I make a motion to appoint, reappoint Ms. Tamika West, as opposed to holding it? Sure. Yeah, but he already got a motion on the table. I would be quicker then. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Was there a second on that? Yes. Okay. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That's three, two. It passes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to I like appoint. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we, m- the uh, position that's uh, vacant by Mr. Johnson, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Mr. Hold on a second. Ricky Clark. This can't be in order. Oh, hold on, we gotta, we gotta stay. Sure they are. They're finish, all full board appointments. Finish, finish your, your Motion to appoint Mr. Ricky Clark to replace the vacancy um, for Mr. Klonis Johnson's resignation. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's uh, unanimous. Now, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Ms. Helen McSwain. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Three, two, it fails. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the appointment of uh, Lee Camp, are you on that one? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I would like to appoint Mr. Michael Edmondson. For what? Is there a <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is there a second? I second that, Mr. Chair. Any discussion? I'm now sorry. you can say for what. Okay, so I'm my so question so my question I'm becomes so sorry. you're a sitting board member who at times we have uh, items that come before this board. Huh? So if you rec- recuse yourself, then two two <laughs> split will put us where? Well, you did talk to the, ca- the legal counsel that about that, that, but not, I believe well, I can they, tell uh, you the answer to that. It won't be the court. Uh, uh, can we please Actually, have a, a negative without a cause is, an, is a positive vote. Ms. Hancock, please take the podium and, and explain to us uh, the legalities or any issues or challenges that would pose for a sitting, if there is, if there, for a sitting the, the, uh, commissioner. The, the law allows the appointment of a sitting commissioner to the development authority specifically. The law what now? The law permits a sitting commissioner to serve on the development authority. What do the bylaws state? The, the bylaws don't matter. It, it, is the, it is the act that created the development authority that was passed by the legislature, and okay. it permits it. Okay, so tell me in a nutshell, sure. two-second version, yes, sir. the duties and responsibilities of this board. What are they supposed to, what have they been created to do? Of which board? The development authority board. It's right here on the top of that page. No, no, no. I want him to state it. Thank you. Okay. Development Authority Board. Oh. It's not on this page. The, the Development Authority. Oh, it's on the. This page. Develop and promote trade, commerce, industry, and employment opportunities for the public good and general welfare. Redevelopment of agencies authorized to determine boundaries for redevelopment and approve plans for redevelopment. That's mm. coming from their organizational act. And we also approve bonds or reissue bonds? Oh, uh, they have the authority to issue bonds. That's a conflict of interest. Why? 
because the commissioner actually abstained from several items that came before this board in terms of um, issuance of bonds for his well, profession. That's a conflict of interest. He has his own personal business. That's a conflict of interest. Well, it was a conflict of interest when I worked for a municipal underwriter, which I don't anymore. But you abstained when you didn't work for them as well. No. So there was a conflict then, and you abstained for cause, and it's on record. No, I just, not, I just we see. haven't voted. I've resigned on Friday. Well, I see there's more issues and more problems that, would, please, let's have order uh, with this than uh, it being beneficial. But we're going to stay in order here. So uh, any I other questions? I apologize, Chairman. Any other questions? I just have a statement. If we're going to move forward as a community, we need to make sure we do that. And what has happened is the business community is already feeling like Clayton County is not open for business based upon a decision not just made by the board, but led by the nominee for the development authority. That is a concern as a board of commissioner. That is a, that is a, a huge concern for me. I hear people about working together, but we've got to do things decent and in order. We are policy setters and makers and I just totally disagree. And, and if we can't make a decision on reappointing chairman, how are we gonna appoint ourselves but we can't reappoint the people I to act that. on the board? <laughs> no. And point. in all things, we must always be transparent in our actions. So, you know, any other statements? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it passes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to to replace the vacancy uh, for Ms. Helen McSwain with a Mr. with a Dr. Don McMillan Jr. I thought I already did that. Your one. business partner? The <laughs> veterinarian. Then I already take no. Yes, I did. They, they, Madam they, they, Clark, they didn't, didn't reappoint her. They just didn't reappoint her. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. But he's making the nomination. You're right. You're right. Go ahead with your nomination. I apologize. I Is there a second? Second. second. Oh. All right. Uh, any questions or statements? I have a question for our attorney. What is your, what is your advice? My advice. Only. That's please, please be your, your advice on appointing a business partner of somebody with a sitting commissioner. And it is also through the state, it is stated that this person is their business partner. What is your advice as our legal counsel? Whether or not there is a prohibition against two individuals who are, who are in the same business from serving on the same board, there's no legal prohibition against that. That's the only thing I can give you is what the law says. Uh, and there's no, there's no. He's right because of Georgia Power. I've got they got two from Georgia Power on there. You've got, yeah, you've you're got exactly one. right, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, so the only, the only thing we have is an ethical complaint that we can make. And where would I make that concern or complaint? If your, if your question is how do you go about filing an ethics complaint, then the ethics board can will provide are supposed to provide uh, forms for doing that. The county's ethics board would provide forms for doing that. Any other statements, comments? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it passes. So I think they got it on. Madam Clerk, I think that's no, water not authority. a water authority. Okay. Um, and the last uh, board appointment, um, is to the Water Authority Board that the Board of Commissioners approved on March 19, 2013. Uh, Elizabeth Armstrong currently serves in that position. And if the well, my question okay. about that is, how, her time shouldn't be up yet, is it? According Madam to Clark. our records, we do have her term expiring March 19, uh, 2018. But, but, Mr. Chairman, if you look at the history, these records are wrong because she was appointed to fill the unexpired, or to, to, to fill a term that originally expired on May 1st, 2012, uh, that, that, that when you, those terms are set by the enabling legislation that creates the water authority, and we can't change the rotation based upon the date they are appointed. So the, ro the, the term rotates on a regular five-year period. That, that office or that particular seat 
was May 1st, 2012, uh, which means the five-year term expires May 1st, 2012. So when she was appointed, she assumed the rest of that term. She was filling out that term, yes, sir. I make a motion that we reappoint uh, Ms. Armstrong to the board. I'll second that. Any questions or statements? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it fails. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would like to appoint Ms. Sylvia Wright. Is there a second? I second that. Any statements, comments? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay, it's three, two, it passes. Is that the last one? I think so. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that is the last one. And this does conclude the agenda for this evening. Before, if there is no further. Yeah, before you adjourn, Mr. Chair, just wanted to mention that um, Saturday for the Clayton Clean Initiative, I'd like to recognize Mr. Stanford, our Chief Operating Officer. He did an yeah. awesome job of organizing that. And to see everyone come together as we did was just an awesome event on Thank Saturday. You. We did a lot of walking and a lot of cleaning, and young people, they enjoy themselves, and it was really, really great. Um, my final thing, and you, you, you know, some of you all may hear me talk about this a lot, um, so be it, but a few, Saturday we're doing a health fair at the Recreation Center. A lot of you, we're, we've got breast cancer down. We've got that down pack, early detection and so forth. Um, Kevin Oglesby, Oglesby, Oglesby with um, storm water. Osby. I'm sorry, I always say it wrong. Storm Osby. water. Osby. 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 <laughs> Kevin, unfortunately, lost his wife to ovarian cancer. Every day, I'm very thankful. And as I said, we don't have that quite down yet. Too many people still are dying because it's hard to detect. I went to a doctor four times. Each time, it was something else, irritable bowel syndrome, whatever. It was not until I passed out that I got the test to determine I had stage three ovarian cancer. So coming out of that, out of this six months of chemotherapy and just a very nasty time, we all hate cancer. Sunday, my pastor asked everybody to stand up who was affected by cancer or knew someone. Just about everybody stood up. But it's not just cancer that we're trying to bring awareness to. When I was going through the chemotherapy, I couldn't go to church. And one of the deacons at my church, who's a pharmacist, and his wife is an RN professor at Clayton State, would come by the house and do communion with my husband and me. And he came by and he said, Commissioner, when this is over, we've got to bring more awareness about various illnesses to the community. And um, well, I told him, and he said, I just told my wife that, that we've got to do this. So he and his wife have been very, very instrumental in helping us bring out various medical professions. And again, not just cancer, not just ovarian cancer. A lot of things we're ignoring, um, our high blood pressure, diabetes, and so forth. And we're just asking everyone to just take charge of their health. And if you would, just come out and get your um, screening, your biometric screenings, or your blood pressure check, and so forth, this Saturday from 10 to 2. Not only are we going to be paying attention to your medical screenings, but we're going to have a good time doing it. we got the Bueller boys, and many of you all know they're all 60-plus men who are going to do line dance and to um, show us how you can be young, exercise at any age. Uh, one of my girlfriends from college does a double judge. Uh, jump rope team, our young people, we want to get them out front of the video games and the phones. And so we're just going to have a good time. Our seniors from our senior center doing Zumba. So again, regardless of anything that is said here tonight, I, and I believe all five of the people on this day is care about Clayton County and care about the people. And you all see us doing various events in the community to show that. And right now, um, this is very serious, and those of you who are saying um, you don't believe it, I just mentioned, you know, Kevin's wife. I just mentioned my own personal journey. Come on. So <laughs> let's, let's please give her a second to, to, to finish her statement. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner. And Sorry. again, thank you all so much. Again, um, until you go through cancer and chemotherapy, you don't know. And uh, again, Thank you all, and I hope you will come out regardless of 
how you feel tonight or how you feel about me, I'm still concerned about your health. Come on out. Thank you. Go ahead. I apologize to hold you all, but I have one thing that we must all recognize. Clayton County was featured in the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Please make sure that you get your copy. It is absolutely phenomenal. I have to say thank you to our uh, Economic Development Board as well as to Mr. Courtney Pogue and his team and for Tamara Partridge for making this happen. It really puts Clayton County in a wonderful light. I wish I could pull it up there. So please go get it, spread the news, get the good news out. All right, motion to go into executive session. So move, Mr. Chair. Is that second? I'll second. probably move and second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, right. it's unanimous. And good that's night, for everyone. litigation and personnel. All right, motion to reconvene. Uh. Is there a motion to reconvene? So move. I'll second it. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous, Mr. Hancock. Mr. Chairman, uh, my understanding that in light of the resignation to be effective June the, uh, May the 31st of uh, Chief Register, that and the board will not meet in regular session until then, uh, that it's the board's desire to appoint an interim police chief to serve upon his leaving. Uh, okay, I would like to make a recommendation that that be do we? Joe Woodall. Yeah, Joe Woodall. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion, concerns, issues? Hearing none. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Is that it? All right, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? You can do it's it. Unanimous. You can do it.